Advanced Google Forms and Docs Using Add-ons, Session 3, Add-ons for Forms, Part 2. The next add-on for Forms is called Form Ranger. It allows you to populate multiple choice, list, checkbox, grid options, all those question types from columns in a sheet or a Doctopus roster. So we're talking about a Google Sheet. It is great for ensuring that your form choices match your values in an existing database of records, such as students, inventory items, expected and attendees to a workshop, or session titles. It is useful for applying matching formulas if you are familiar with the VLOOKUP formula, the MATCH formula in Sheets, but you do not have to be familiar with these. It opens the possibility of a dynamic form options provided you're willing to explore spreadsheet formulas, but you do not have to. So, for users of the popular Doctopus add-on for Sheets, Form Ranger includes rosters automatically. So if you use Doctopus, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't use Doctopus, don't worry about it. Let's check out the Form Ranger tutorial. I will be not showing Hi, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to use a Google Form add-on called Form Ranger. Uh, Form Ranger is very similar to Form Values in that it allows you to uh, insert value choices into different questions based on a spreadsheet that you have created. Um, as you can see, there are four different types of uh, questions uh, that I have already created. One is a check uh, list question, uh, drop down question from a list, uh, multiple choice questions, and a grid type question. Okay, and None of them have values in them right now, uh, but we will fill this out based on a spreadsheet that I have already graded. Just like any other add-ons, you would install it uh, uh, called Form Ranger. The Form Ranger add-on recognizes uh, the questions that you currently have in the form. As you can see, each of these represent a question that I have on the form. Uh, when you add more questions uh, in order to uh, show the questions on the list on the sidebar, you would have to click on refresh questions. So let's get right into adding values into each of the questions. Uh, before we do that, I want to show you two spreadsheets that I have created. Uh, one spreadsheet that I have in here contains answers for the first two questions that I have created. Uh, the first row of your spreadsheet is going to basically be the name of your list. So in this case, the list tech giants contain these different people uh, that I have as options. The list social media will contain the different social media uh, outlets that I have listed. Okay, another spreadsheet that I have created is a names list spreadsheet, and it could be any name that you want. Uh, but basically, what I did was I, I copied the top 100 male names that were uh, given to uh, newborn babies and the top 100 female names that were given to newborn babies. So, uh, in this case, if I go back to my form and I want to pre I want to populate the values in each of the questions, all I have to do, just like here, is select the question itself. Okay, uh, check that I want to populate uh, from values list, and then I would pick that list itself. Uh, in this case, I have already loaded tech giants and social media lists, so I'm just going to select it. So for the first question, it's about the tech giants. Um, and then the second question is choose your favorite male name. Uh, if you look at my drop down, it is currently not in that list. So to add it, I'm going to click on New Values List, the most recent, one of the most recent documents I'm working on. So I'm going to go ahead and select Names List. And what it's going to do is going to, it's going to ask me what, uh, what part of the spreadsheet do I want to use. This question is about mail. So in this case, I'm going to use Sheet 1 and about mail. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And you can give this a, uh, uh, a name values as you can see here as soon as I populate the questions so if you look over to the right side once this uh, uploads okay 
I now have a list called mail list that I can insert to any questions that I want. In this case, it's already inserted into the drop down list questions that I question that I have, as you can see. Um, the next one is I want to add the female names. So to do that, I'm going to do the same exact steps. Popular value from the list, select. I'm going to add the new value list. Okay, it comes from the names list spreadsheet. From sheet one, it's going to be under female. I'm going to go ahead and click next. I'm going to call this female list. Save and populate the question. And uh, in just a moment here, you will see that the question is populated with all the female names that I have listed in that spreadsheet. Okay, and then the last question I have is about social media use. In this case, this is a grid type question. Okay, I have a yes and a no. Uh, basically, what I'm asking is, if you use the social media, say yes. If not, then say no. So in this case, I'm going to populate it. I have a social media list already created. Click that. Now, uh, I have a form with that question filled out. Um, the nice thing about this is that I can add as many lists as I would like. I can create as many spreadsheets as, as I would like to load. And again, it makes it a lot easier uh, and uh, more efficient in creating questions with values, especially if you are going to have a huge list um, of options uh, like teachers uh, or students and, or whatever it may be. I hope this tutorial was helpful. G Forms, I mean G Math for Forms, is a great tool for any math class or any math teacher. So I apologize to those of you who are not math teachers. You may want to check it out because you could find a use for it yourself depending on what you're teaching. The great thing about G Math is you can create graphs, including plotting points, and complex math problems directly in your form. So all that trying to find the interesting symbols for the different math types of formulas is done for you. And you can do it directly in your form or you can do it from the sidebar in your form and then insert them as form items, which is awesome. You can type in functions and create graphs that are associated with those functions. You can also plot points in the same graph and find the line that best fits those points and specify a viewing window. You can also deploy a form to allow responders to use GMath. So if you create a test or a quiz, you can make it so that the students can respond to the questions in your twist or quiz using GMath, which means they will be able to use the proper annotation for math. Let's take a look at the video for GMath. This tutorial will show you how to use the GMath for Forms add-on in Google Forms. This should help math teachers put more complicated expressions into a Google form. The first thing you need to do is get the add-on. To do that you need to go into the tab area and click on add-ons and get add-ons. You'll get a pop-up box with some choices. Um, GMath happens to be one of the first ones you see. If you don't see it in the list here you can type into the search box GMath it should come up. It's a free add-on. Go ahead and click free. You'll get another pop-up asking you to give access to the program. Just click accept. At this point, you should be able to put more complicated expressions directly into your form without having to do a copy and paste. To do this, instead of working in the regular form like we would adding an item, you're going to go back up to add-ons and click GMath and you have some choices. You can create math expressions, create a graph, or create a statistical display. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create a math expression. Just go ahead and click on that. You'll get a pop-up over here on the right. And it'll give you some areas to fill in. And it also gives you a sample. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and 
clear out that sample. And you can either click clear or just highlight it and click it and click delete. I'm going to use um, just one question to show you today. So this is question number one. And we're going to simplify a radical. Simplify the radical expression. Please don't judge my math skills. Uh, and then this box is where you're going to create the expression. If you scroll down, there are quite a few symbols that you wouldn't normally find on a regular keyboard. So I'm going to use a radical. Go ahead and click on it, it's right here. If you come up to the display box, it'll give you some code and it'll show you here in the preview box what that'll look like. Now I'm gonna change these variables to numbers. So I'm gonna come up here in the actual code and put my cursor next to the N, and we're going to change that to a three. And then the A, which is under, I'm going to change to negative 206, and then I also want to put a variable in here, and I want it to be um, X to the sixth. So to get the X with the exponent six, there's actually a spot for that right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on it, and it'll give you, once again, the code, and it'll display what it's going to look like just below it. And I want to change that variable of A to a 6. And here in the preview box, we'll show you exactly what it's going to look like. Once you click Insert, it'll pop up over here in your form. It'll give you the question or what you want students to do the expression, and then a spot for their answer. At this point, there's no way to put more complicated expressions into a multiple choice, but at least this way you'll be able to collect answers in a spreadsheet, which should make for easier grading using Flubberoo or just grading visually. I am saving one of my favorite ones for last. It's called Doc Appender. And what it does, it appends Google Form question responses to the bottom of a selected Google Docs. So if you're wondering, I don't even understand, what does that even mean? It means you create some Google Docs, you have a form, and you can choose questions that you want the responses to show up in a separate Google Doc. So it's another place for collecting data. So it's not just in a form. So if you're doing some kind of observation or any kind of data gathering and you have a form that you use over and over again, but yet you're collecting data on individual people and you want to see that people's individual data in a form other than the spreadsheet, which if you've used Google Forms, you know that the data will show you a summary of the data, but you can't really parse out individuals. So this is what Doc Appender will do for you. And you can have the data show up as a bulleted list, separate vertical tables, or rows in a single horizontal table. Now there are only three types of questions that you can append from. The list question, the multiple choice question, or the checkbox question. And it lets you choose which questions you want to append. So you can be more or more than one. Using it, for example, a teacher can get a single running document of all our visits to a class, all their visits to a classroom. Or you can have a Google Doc per student with a running record of observation. Or it's great for peer review protocols on student docs. So what it does is, Doc Appender hooks up with a folder in Drive and turns one of your form questions into a doc picker. It lets you choose which questions and then can, can include a timestamp and the username if you want to. So let's take a look at the Doc Appender tutorial. How to use Doc Appender. 
Okay, first of all, you do have to have a form created, and I've created it in the essence of time. Most people know how to do that. And then you would have a folder created in your Google Drive with the same name as your form. And I do think it's important to keep the same exact name. Um, also, inside of your Google Drive folder, you would want to have whatever documents you want the form responses appended to. It could just be one document, or it could be several. If you want the user to be able to choose where to send the information, then you would have a, form, a, a doc created in your folder for each one of those choices. And so this example is a peer evaluation rubric where students are going to evaluate group projects of their peers. And so the docs I've created are, are a document for each of the groups. Some other ideas that you might want to use for this, just to kind of get you thinking, is maybe you want to store um, a certain type of quiz over time. And you might have your documents then be your student names. Um, you might want to store something like reading logs where there's a lot of written information over time and you might want all of the student documents on one document each week and so you might have your documents created by the weeks of the of the quarter another one is maybe you want to store grades on a certain quiz and you would want all student records for each quiz on a separate document so you might want to choose to create a document for them lots of other choice lots of other ways of using this um, some some um, administrators use Google Forms for walkthrough evaluations or for teacher evaluations, evaluate lesson plans, you might have a folder for that and you might have your teacher's names here. So just an endless way of using them, limited only by your imagination and I'm sure you'll think of other ones. But for this particular example, again, I'm using it as an evaluation of a group project. And so there's my folder and my documents. Here's my form in edit mode. And here's what the form would look like live. Okay, so to set up Doc Appender on it, I'm going to have, first of all, whatever information I want to collect, the name of the evaluator, the group name, and then I have my actual project rubric. Now, this group name pro uh, question, you have to have one question in your document which will choose the document that you want to append to. And notice I haven't put any responses in yet because Doc Appender will do that for me, and I'll demonstrate that for you. But first of all, to get Doc Appender, you would go to your add-ons tab, which is newly added to your form, and just like the others, you would go to get add-ons. It would take you into the store, and you select whichever add-on you want. I've already added all of them on, but had I not, there would be a free button right there. I would add it, and then I would have to agree to the stipulations um, to give it access to what it needs access to to work, and then it will appear on your add-ons list, and I've already done that. So I'm going to go ahead and go in and open Doc Appender in the sidebar over here and show you just how easy it is to use. It's, it's, it's extremely easy to use. And so the first thing you would do when it pops up is I'll show you what it looks like if I just started. You select the folder, the target document folder, where you want the document to be that you are appending the form responses to. And so I want to choose my peer evaluation folder. You could also create one there, but I recommend just having it created ahead of time and going ahead and having your docs created as well. That simplifies the process. So if you chose the wrong one, you could choose a different one. And then in step two, you have to choose the question name that is going to choose which documents are appended with the form responses. And so for me, it's going to be the group name. That's the one that's going to choose the documents. You also have a choice of all of the above, but if you, if you have that, that means that you want the form responses to go to every document, and I don't see that as being a common choice. I don't want to do that now for sure. But if you do, it just adds an, an um, all of the above choice, but I'm not going to add that choice. And then when I save and populate in a second, it's going to take all of those documents here, and it's going to populate this form question with those as responses. But you want to let the form of Doc Appender do that, not have those done ahead of time. And so I'm going to save and populate the question, and you'll see those choices came up on their own. And each one of those then is kind of a target for that particular document in the folder. So when a student chose that, it would send their responses to that document. Okay, so that's the kind of the beauty and the magic of Doc Appender. That's what it does. Next, you choose what form values you want to be added. If you want the timestamp, that will tell you when the um, 
particular submission was sent in that might be important at times. I'm not going to choose that one right now, though. I just want the student's last name, first name, the group name, and then the project rubric. And so that choose whatever questions from the form you want sent to the document here. Next, you choose the format for the appended responses. And I will show you what each one of these looks like. There are three choices, a separate bulleted list. Each form response then would be put in a separate bulleted list. A separate vertical table where each form response is added to a table with all the other form responses. Or you want, uh, or, I'm sorry, separate vertical table for each form response. Or rows in a single horizontal table is where each form response is added to the same table. And I'm going to go in, I've set up something ahead of time to kind of show you what that looks like. And so I'll show you... Um, in my folder what each one of those looks like even though they're kind of self-explanatory and since I get to the right folder okay the layout examples are here so this one shows you rows in a single horizontal table and I already have some information in there just to give you an idea of what it would look like so it would create one table and each form response would populate the table and so that is rows in a single horizontal table. Separate bulleted list is just like it sounds like. Each form then would be uh, put in a separate bulleted list and they're separated by a horizontal line. And then the last one, which I'm going to use in this instance, is a separate vertical table. So each form response then would be in its own separate table. And so those are the three choices. Just each time you just choose the one that would work best for you. But for this particular one, I'm going to choose separate vertical tables. And then that is all there is to it. That's all you have to do to set up your doc appender. And I'm going to go in and, and submit a response and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here I am in the live form, and so I'm going to uh, submit a response. I'm pretending I'm a student. I'm going to be Jimmy Goody, and I'm going to choose the group. Let's say I'm evaluating group one this time, and then I'm going to go in and the group is presented, and I'm going in and doing my evaluation of their group presentation, and then I'm going to submit it, and when I go into that particular document in my peer evaluation rubric folder if I open up group one's document you can see there's my submission and so imagine if, if several different students have submitted this you've got all of group one's evaluations on one page group two's evaluations on one page and it just makes it much easier much more manageable and so again it's very very easy um, to set up Doc Appender, it does all the work for you. And then if I go back to my form as well, you can see that my form responses are also still going to be on my spreadsheet. And so I haven't lost that functionality of the spreadsheet either. And so I put some other responses in there playing around. But so that's Doc Appender. And the assignment for session three. You will be creating a total of three forms for this assignment. One form you're going to create utilizes form limiter, form values, and choice eliminator all in one form. Your second form you're going to create is a form that utilizes form ranger. The third form you're going to create is a form and the accompanying docs and folders that utilizes doc appender. The next part of your assignment is to pick at least two of the form add-ons and write a reflection piece that answers the following questions. How would you utilize the add-ons? What do you find useful about them? What other types of add-ons do you think would be helpful? Make sure you share all your forms, docs for the appender part of the assignment, and your reflection with me, and copy and paste the link to the forms where you turn in assignment two in Edmodo. Email me if you have any questions.